I was in prison for three years. I don't know how to punch. Show me. Terrible. You wanna show me how to punch? Show me. <laughs> That's how you punch. So one of the things that I liked about the movie was Hope's relationship with Hank because it's really sort of strained and you can see that there's a desire on both their parts, I feel like, to reconnect with one another, but things they have to overcome. Do you feel like at the beginning of the movie, Hope is looking to reconnect or wanting to, or is it sort of necessity that pits them back together? I think consciously it's necessity that pits them back together. And if you were to ask her outright, she would say, oh, I'm, I just, I do it begrudgingly because I have to, because I've been put in this situation. But I think that um, deep down inside, there isn't a child alive who doesn't desperately um, seek and sort of need and desire connection with their parents. That was one of the, the most wonderful things to play in this film, was that on the surface there is a, an incredible amount of tension and animosity between the two characters, but underneath it all you know that in their heart of hearts all they want is for it to work. Now dive through the keyhole, Scott. You charge big, you dive small, then you emerge big. One of the things that Hope is always sort of saying in the film, particularly at the beginning, is, but why are we bringing in Scott when I actually know how I use the technology, just let me do it and go and do it. At the end of the day, do you think Hope uh, will have been able to sort of accomplish it in the same way without Scott's help, or was it really the team of you, Hank, mm -hmm. Scott, and Hope that was able to pull it off? You know, I, I think that um, that's sort of one of life's most interesting and wonderful mysteries is that sometimes the most obvious answer is not the the best path and doesn't actually result in the greatest good and i and i feel like this story is um partly hope's journey in learning that that um she might feel like she can do anything and she's invincible and the world is is you know at her fingertips because she's capable and she's strong and she's talented and she's you know a, a muay thai fighter and all these <laughs> things i mean she's got a great resume but um you know really at the at the core of it, what Hank's looking for in his Ant-Man is what what does your heart want? And does your heart have the humility to take this power without it corrupting you? And her pride is so out of control. I mean, her ego is so big that he, I think, is aware to a certain extent that she has a long way to go before she's learned the humility that Scott's learned by having his whole life and his family taken away from him and the suffering that he's been through. Mm -hmm. And going back to sort of the relationship between Hope and Hank, how does Scott's relationship with his daughter, was Hope seeing that? Like, do, is she able to recognize sort of that parallel between the two? It was something that was under it all. I mean, I don't think it was overt in the script, but it was a conversation I ended up having um, with the writers at one point where I said to them, look, me as, as Hope Van Dyne, I'm telling you, she sees Scott and his and his daughter as her and her father. And she is seeing a potential repeat of a history that has wounded her and left her with a lot of pain. And she doesn't want to repeat that experience for another little girl. She wants to spare them from that. Um, you know, she was raised by two superheroes. And that's a crazy way to be raised. And she's got a lot of baggage that goes along with that and a lot of hurt. And she just sees another little innocent, vulnerable little girl who could potentially have a lot of damage and a lot of hurt if her daddy becomes a superhero too. 